Um, let's talk about what's happening in North Carolina here. We can pull this up. So this broke last night. Um, North Carolina State Representative Trisha Cotham, who's a Democrat, has decided that she is going to switch parties, that she is going to be a Republican in the state of North Carolina. Now, this is immensely important because her flip within the state Senate creates a supermajority for the Republicans. North Carolina has a a Democratic governor, Governor Roy Cooper, a supermajority would allow the Republicans in the state Senate to uh, have a veto-proof majority. So what they can do is pass legislation without the governor's sign-off with this flip. And what makes it especially egregious is that Trisha Trisha Cotham got elected to the North Carolina State Senate by significant margins in a plus Biden district that's a double digit plus Biden district. She beat her Republican opponent by nearly 20 points after coming out of the Democratic primary. She ran on a $15 minimum wage. She ran on expanding Medicaid, which fortunately the governor signed into law before this happened. She also, yeah, like affordable housing. She ran as a standard Democrat. And all of a sudden, she makes this announcement after her election. Uh, Here she is this morning explaining her reasoning. Good morning, and thank you for being here. I am Trisha Cotham. I am a single mom of two amazing sons, a teacher, a small business owner, a woman with strong faith, a national championship basketball coach, and a public servant. Today, I add Republican to that list. decided to change my party affiliation, joining the Republican Party, and have been welcomed with open arms by my colleagues, and I'm glad to call you all my colleagues. As long as I have been a Democrat, the Democrats have tried to be a big tent. But this now where we are, modern day Democratic Party, has become unrecognized. I want to restart this because we end up clipping these. I'm, I said state Senate when I said it should have said state house. So we're going to I'm going to restart our little segment on this. I apologize. So this is my fault. Um, so uh, apologies, guys. Let's uh, we'll we'll and we'll make a note about this for Dorsey. Um, so uh, you're going to have a little bit of deja vu. But here we go. So North Carolina State Representative Trisha Cotham has announced this morning that she will be switching parties. Um, right now, the state Senate has a supermajority, but she is a part of the state House. And this has enormous ramifications because a supermajority in the state House would allow for uh, lots of aggressive anti-abortion legislation to, uh, to, to pass even though the state has a uh, Democratic governor. But here she is explaining her reasoning for switching parties, even though she won in a safely blue Biden district by double digits. She's decided on uh, like a few some weeks, months after her election that she is instead going to be a Republican. Uh, Here we go. Good morning, and thank you for being here. I am Trisha Cotham. I am a single mom of two amazing sons, a teacher, a small business owner, a woman with strong faith, a national championship basketball coach, 
and a public servant. Today, I add Republican to that list. I have decided to change my party affiliation, joining the Republican Party, and have been welcomed with open arms by my colleagues, and I'm glad to call you all my colleagues. As long as I have been a Democrat, the Democrats have tried to be a big tent. But this now where we are, modern day Democratic Party, has become unrecognizable to me and to so many others throughout this state and this country. The party wants to villainize anyone who has free thought, free judgment, has solutions, who wants to get to work to better our state, not just sit in a meeting and have a workshop after a workshop, but really work with individuals to get things done, because that's what real public servants do. If you don't do exactly what the Democrats want you to do, they will try to bully you. They will try to cast you aside. I saw that when I first filed for office and was told, why didn't you ask for our permission? I didn't think I needed to do that as a female. And quite frankly, I was offended. Oh, no. But when I came back to this legislature, I knew times were different. Okay. And things all right, so uh, lots of aggrievement. She personally did not feel at home with her Democratic colleagues, so she decided to just change her entire ideology because she did run on LGBTQ rights, $15 minimum wage, Medicaid expansion, which thankfully has now passed because the Democratic governor signed it into law before these machinations happened. Um, affordable housing, that kind of stuff. I mean, she ran as a Democrat. And she had been in office for, I think, what was it, uh, 2007 to 2017, then was out, ousted, then ran again, got back into office. And that's what she's um, she, she's speaking about there, about her return. And so why this is so terrifying is that the Republicans already have a supermajority in the state Senate. They have 30 seats out of 50. That's a supermajority in North Carolina terms. But in the, the lower chamber, in the state house, they did not have the necessary votes to have a supermajority there. Now, with this flip of Cotham, who repre represents a... Uh, Mecklenburg County and again ran as a, de a Democrat and beat her, her Republican opponent by double digits in a Bl Biden blue district uh, is is switching parties to move over to give them give the Republicans what they need to essentially block any agenda item that the Democratic governor in North Carolina wants to pass and like we saw this in our home state of New York to a lesser extent, right? Which is these, the IDC in New York State under Andrew Cuomo was a group of Democrats that ran as Democrats, but when they got into office because of favors and intra-party dealing, decided to caucus with republicans and vote as republicans even though their voters that were coming and electing them they might not have kept up with the politics of their state representative senator etc they just go down the ballot blue because in new york it's a very blue state and so they were consistently getting elected and re-elected despite voting and acting as Republicans in every way in order to ham hamstring progressives on behalf of Andrew Cuomo. And they just kept getting back into office. And Cuomo was very grateful to them for doing such a thing. In this instance, of course, the governor is opposed to this kind of thing. But I am curious what deal making happened to get 
this uh, representative uh, um, Cotham to make this decision. I, I mean, we, you cannot rule out literal bribes. You can't rule out literal bribes. I mean, it, part of this is the Joe Manchin syndrome, right? Where now she gets to be at the center of the conversation and she gets to be the vote that des that decides everything. I'm the decider. She gets to be that person. But it really is a major, major step back because North Carolina had an opportunity with this Democratic governor to do what's happening in Wisconsin now, which is begin to undo some of the harm that was done in the backlash to Obama in 2010 when Republicans made these major gains in state houses and then gerrymandered their districts to ensure that even if the majority of the state wants to vote blue, is trending blue, that Republican power is so cemented that they are untouchable. And the fact that North Carolina was able to elect a, uh, a Democratic governor was a step in the right direction. And now we have this major shift seemingly out of nowhere that is really concerning. And um, Aaron Kleiman, uh, I... I uh, sent me an email <laughs> from the state's project that uh, I haven't been able to look over explaining how what some of the ramifications of this. But check out the state's project because I'm sure they'll have some work um, uh, surrounding this very topic. But I just like major, major problem here. I, wh what do you think this is, Bradley? What do you think that this, uh, uh, the reasoning behind this could possibly be, except for just... I get to be misimportant, and maybe there are some behind the scenes bribes that have some plausible deniability. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this might, there might, this woman might be undergoing a, a certain, another state level, like, cinemification of, like, her political career in the sense that, um, Maybe perhaps there were some personal vendettas or personal, um, issues or gripes that she had with the Democrats. And, um, as you said, if some, if some sort of, um, you know, favor trading happened, um, both in terms of, like you said, you, you, sure. I mean, any, I think anything's on the table because, like you said, this. If I'm not, re if I'm remembering correctly, I saw this from a uh, 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 Paul Blessed over at the uh, Discourse Block, who lives in Raleigh. He's a North Carolina resident. Um, hasn't covered the legislature in a while, but Cotham's district is like sixty-one thirty-eight. Like it's a really like deep blue district. Mm -hmm. This is not. This is not Joe Manchin in West Virginia. This is not. Um, you know, Colin Peterson, formerly in Minnesota, up up in rural Minnesota. Like this is a blue, blue district. Um, I'm wondering if she's thinking that if there is a if there is a shift with, um, you know, once the once if any sort of fair maps in North Carolina potentially get thrown out as a result, what if she potentially is concerned about That's, redistricting yeah. or about gerrymandering for her own district to to potentially hew on the side of being in a safer district now that she would be now as a reformed uh re you know reformed democrat now republican so cementing her own cementing power her presence yeah. in in the legislature and also i'm wondering if for example this this happens and they're like hey listen um in the spirit of comedy and then in the spirit of her you joining us uh representative Collins is now going to have a committee chair mm -hmm. you know representative Collins is going to have a have a going to be able to gavel in like a you know a awesome. plum sub club subcommittee plum committee right. chair i just think there has to be some sort of agreement that they made where they're like you will get you will have more perks if you become a republican once we and and, and with those perks you are going to be the person who kind of catalyzes our ability to give you those perks sort of that that is that is um that that is definitely bare minimum what's happening here which is that she is getting some assurances that her new district whatever it is is gerrymandered in such a way that she's never going to be uh forced to leave power or at least makes it very difficult to get her out um and then power uh, more committee assignments her getting to be the the power player as well but this is just a great example of how of how dirty state politics can really get um and again as i said earlier uh, don't rule out just generally money and corruption i'd be curious if some you know so this news broke this morning but i'd imagine some reporters in north carolina are going to do some deep digging into her business dealings uh in the coming weeks and months following this announcement covered this yesterday but 
a North Carolina state representative named Trisha Cotham is switching from Democrat to Republican. And she just got reelected earlier in the year. She had been in office for 10 years, then was yeah. voted out and then um, and then rejoined uh, or, or re- ran again, then immediately switched to the Republican Party, which is odd because her district is a double digit Biden district. And what's notable is that the there's a Democratic governor in North Carolina right now. The state Senate has a supermajority, which allows allows them to override his veto. But you need both chambers. Her switching gives the lower chamber that extra vote that they need on the Republican side in heavily gerrymandered districts to veto governors, the governors, uh, or to override the governor's veto, which means they can pass a slew of anti-trans legislation, abortion bans. Uh, They can potentially, I think it's uh, 50-50 on whether they have the statutory ability to do it, but rewrite the legislative maps that were previously rewritten to be a little less ridiculous. And I think that's part of uh, ridiculously tilted towards Republicans. I think that's part of why Trisha Cotham made this choice is because she's probably gotten some assurances. We'll gerrymander your district so you constantly get reelected. Um, but here she is explaining her decision to Fox's Neil Cavuto. And predictably, it's just because, you know, the left was just too mean to her. Look what you mm. made me do. The Democratic Party to the Republican Party. Representative, good to have you. Why are you doing this? <laughs> Thank you so much. It's an honor to be on your show. This is something I have really thought long and hard about since I've entered this chamber in January. I had served previously for um, 10 years and then took a break and came back with the intent, as always, to be a public servant, to really be a stateswoman, do greater good for all of the great state of North Carolina. I noticed some pretty big changes in the Democratic Party right when I got here. And it was very disturbing. Um, I caught a lot of flack over the fact that on my car and on various things, I display the American flag, that I talk a lot about my importance and belief in my faith. And I've used Jesus several times when I've led our chamber in house prayer. I was told you can never trust a dim who wears camo. And just this week, called an ammo sexual, the do support gun rights. Those are, that might seem minor, but that is very much absolutely out of everything our country stands for. And I was what thinking petty, I believe. not minor. Petty. And I came here to be that leader. I have a strong record of working with Republicans for since I started. That, that is extremely important to me. Instead, I saw the Democratic Party just want to make excuses to focus on very small so, so matters. We're, I'm sorry, Republican. Representative, we're very tight for time here. We're very tight for time. I apologize for that. I did want to get a sense of the reaction you got from your old Democratic friends, what they made of your move. Well, I mean, last week they called for my resignation or for a primary challenge and have paid thousands of dollars of false ads attacking me and my family. So they're getting what they want and what they deserve. And I think this will start a trend throughout our country because people have had enough and the partisanship of destroying personality, personal lives and going after my two children. I'm a single mom. Um, So it it was an easy decision. So very quickly, were there. So just to be clear. Because someone made fun of her camo outfit and called her an amosexual, she abandoned her party platform or her, uh, sorry, her policy platform of a $15 minimum wage and LGBTQ rights. I mean, that was just being called an amosexual was so earth shattering that her entire stated philosophy that she won her seat on in the Democratic district just fell apart. It was it was really the Jenga block, the amosexual comment. 
I, I think that people have become way too comfortable with saying this online and in, on the news now. Like, the ejected from the left narrative was always, like, the silliest thing in 2016 when people, like, took it seriously. But we're just so far from 2016, and people have had no problem just coming on and pretending that, like, okay, like, let's say this is true. It's just delegitimizing right. of other things about you. It's like, you can't say this and make me think you could be a real good politician because you're super petty. Like, yeah. You're, you're very, you're very willing to change your mind for the pettiest interpersonal reasons which people again online treat as though it's very very compelling and of course you can't expect people to do any better than that but it's just like you can if they're in government like you can if they're like you know proposing to like be representing like the news or journalism expect them to have a bit of a tougher shell than this and if they don't certainly i wouldn't treat them as though like they can be a real intellectual partner and in, you know on the left you know in government like it just makes them seem like they're like yeah petty baby you know right so that's, I, that's with the addendum that if you even believe her. I mean, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah. Kids, what, what, where, where in this country, even in like I, New York City, where in this country, in the mainstream, literally in government, can you say, don't use the word God? Where? I, I Not think, even here in New York City. In the, North Carolina. The evil liberal bastion in New York City that Marjorie Taylor Greene says smells like shit and is filled with filth and all this other stuff she said on Tucker Carlson last night. Even in New York City, you would be in the minority if you were like, don't say God. You can't say God. It, it's to me that's the funny part. Like if if you believe them, it to me is more disqualifying than if they're just like a grifter. I'm surprised because at least that's like, okay, I'm surprised more people don't do this because it's kind of smart. We have no laws that prevent this. It's really silly that we don't have any laws that make yes. you, that prevent this. But, should, a special election should happen. But yeah, but for me to believe you is for me to believe that your like moral integrity is so low that I wouldn't trust you like if with anything. Right. <laughs> but like, you know, in our society, you can't say that. You can't say that behaving like this or having or making this kind of argument about why you changed your mind makes you like unqualified to have power trust me i'm so sensitive that i have zero principles and it's all about my personal flattery and that's what my, that's what my public service really boils down to this is like when someone made fun of me for wearing a fish t-shirt and then i just quit my job and became yeah. a roadie for fish exactly <laughs> you know because, <laughs> because honestly the disrespect was too much and i have to commit i have now have to commit my life to Honestly, I mean, no, I would respect okay. that. Actually, if you quit your job and went and become a roadie for you know fish, what? that's actually <laughs> that's dedication. Yeah. Now, when people have now said, things have changed, that would have... be following your beliefs. You were a fish fan who decided to dedicate your life to fish. This woman's the opposite. She yeah. posed as a Democrat who even went on the record years ago. I was reading and told her like this heartfelt personal story about how she's going to fight for abortion rights because she had an abortion when she was younger and now she's out there saying um i'm not gonna uh, uh go on the record yet about abortion restrictions we'll see how this goes yeah well, they called her an amosexual matt don't you understand that's a slur the left has gone way too far it's the only slur that's allowed now <laughs> let that sink in yeah i mean honestly